going on guys? Good morning. Today, we're gonna to be installing flat foot shifting. What I mean by installing is we just have to wire it in and uh, run it over to the Nexus here and then I have to set up in the software. Never done this before and again, as you've seen, I'm trying to get more and more to the tuning of this, right? I'm not a tuner. So I'm just learning more from this thanks to like people like Nick, Alex, uh, Joe or Dual Design, like I'm very fortunate. So, um, watching a ton of videos, wanna kinda of set it up here. It's one of those things I want it to work but I also don't because to me, I know it can be hard on the engine if you don't set it up right. So I just wanna kinda of get it there and set it up just to try it and be like, hey, is this something I want? I can just run the wiring. I just got a deep pin and then run wires over. Now I'm pretty fortunate uh, when, when Jose set up the harness, there was extra wires over here, okay? So he built in, there's two extra wires, I believe, that run with the uh, drive-by wire pedal. He's like, hey, there's extra connectors and pins here. Let's utilize that and it's just over there in case you need it for something, which works out great. Gave me a ton of slack, so now I'm gonna just run that wire. I don't have to add anything. I'm just gonna have to pin it to a pin. I'll deep pin the pins there and just run it over. Now I don't know if I need to use both on this because on the connector, which I'll show you inside the car here, there's two wires. I need to look it up in the book what they're doing. Right now they're not working, right? The clutch switch is not set up. And the reason for that is I like to start the car without the clutch depressed. The pressure plate's not that heavy, but it's one of those things, why put that pressure on the car when it's cold starting, especially here like today, it's getting a little nipply out. Uh, I'd rather not take the chance of causing any problems. Um, and for the most part, if you try to start this car with the clutch in, which I may or may not have done before, uh, it just could burn. I'm like, oh, you're an idiot. Don't do that again. So yeah, um, it's just a good way to do it. I don't have remote start, so I can only do it if I'm physically in the car anyways. So yeah, I just always had that. It's one of those things that's nice too when I can be able to just reach in the car. I know as long as I look over, yep, it's a neutral, turn it on, duh, 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 duh. it's nice just to have that. I don't have to have it down. It's harder on the bearings. It's harder to get the car started because there's more friction there, right? There's more pressure on everything. So starters, everything's got to work harder. So it just makes it a little bit nicer. Just make sure it's out of gear. Uh, it's in neutral and you got your e-brake up. That being said, let's go into the dash and I'll show you the plug here. You have to unplug and now I'm gonna look in the book here and figure out where we need to pin into and then run it over to the Nexus and then set it up in the software. So you guys can see that connector right there. Hopefully I can put a circle or you can see the connector undone. But one thing that's hard is you can kind of see there is a yellow and a green and red wire coming out of it there. I need to figure out which we need to use or if we need to use both of them. I assume one is ground and one is the switch itself. Uh, one would just go to the physical body ground. The other one would just be the switch that goes to the Nexus. I would assume. I wouldn't think it'd be any other way. I could be 100% wrong, but I, that's what I'm assuming. It's a standard switch style motion, kind of like a momentary switch. And I believe that's what this is. Again, I'm going to look in the book to guarantee that so I explain this properly. Um, I'm going to try and move the camera here so you can see exactly where the pins are going. So you guys can see there, that's from the top side of the connector where you would depress it. You can see on the left side is the green and red wire, and then on the yellow, whoop, the yellow is on the left side. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this in awkward position, so I apologize if it's zooming in and out. It's trying to hunt because I'm so close, it's not happy. But that just shows where the wire is. So I gotta see which is the ground and which is the physical switch. And again, usually in a momentary switch, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I wanna look it up in the book and make 100% sure. So I went ahead and deep pinned this. The reason I deep pinned it is I have a ton of these Toyota pins uh, that Jose Valia at Kaizen Motorsports helped me years ago figure out part numbers for this stuff. Um, he kind of keeps it close to his chest, so I don't want to go over all of that right now. Um, but we're able to deep pin this, and I don't like cutting wires and stuff because, again, now if I need to go back to the factory stuff, if needed, the pins are just sitting there and I've got this video to know where they need to go or I got the Toyota book. Now, I need to look at a book still or realistically what I'm just gonna do for now is I'm just gonna pin it in there and then flip flop it to see which is which to see which is ground and which isn't. Again, this should be a momentary switch and it shouldn't matter. It should not matter, period, end of story. It, sh it just, it, the ECU doesn't care. Um, so one just goes to ground and then one just goes to the ECU. Pretty basic and yeah, so the other thing that's nice is I don't need to run any wires because the wires are already inside the car. But what I does suck is I got to get in the car upside down now and try and pin this. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, it's never fun to do. So yeah, I'm going to try and get it up in there and try and do this real quick. One thing I want to mention when deep pinning this stuff, you can see here, you have to undo these locks that are on top. So you have to deep pin it from the back side of the wire, or sorry, for the front side, you'll actually push up and out of the lock, but you have to pull this lock out first. And sometimes this thing isn't too happy. It doesn't want to come undone. So you have to be aware of that. So I'm down here crimping right now. So there's three wires he ran over. I only need two of them, but I wanted to show you guys this. I use a generic crimper and it works, but 
you can see there, you wanna get around the wire and then the sheathing itself. I use one of these eye I've had this since 2016 or 15, and it works great. Honestly, I'm impressed. So, stripped it there, I've got these Klein tool strippers. I, I like this style. Uh, I can get into tight areas with it, and it goes down really small, so if you can see the wire gauge there, it goes down to like 26. So, I've got these for the small stuff, and then I got another set that is medium size, and I got the big boys uh, that does like 10 and eight gauge, and above that, it's pretty hard. So again here, I'm going to crimp the other one on. I'm going to wrap this wire back up, tuck it up away. And I'm going to try and sheathe this. Or I'm going to wrap the, um, they have this tape that you can put around wire now. Just to keep it, because it doesn't need to be really be sheathed per se. Um, but I'm going to tape it up uh, and just tuck it up there. And then run it up over the column. And then into the two pins that are there uh, for the connector. And then go over to the other side. And then put one to the um, ground and then the other one as a switch uh, to the ECU. Again, it should not matter. We're going to find out. So now that we have this done here, I just need to slide the pin in and it's kind of blown out here, but you can see there's two sides of this pin. That's the top piece there. It should slide in this way here. Keyword should. Should slide in. I believe it's this way. Or maybe I have it upside down. I don't think though. Do. Maybe I do. Huh. Find out. No, I think so. I don't know if that lock still pushed down too far. There we go. And you can hear it click. Boom. There we go. Sorry, I was out of the view there, so I was looking at it. Um, but yeah, that's in now. Again, I'm just going to tape up this wire here. And now, see this lock here? It needs to be pushed back down. Boom, boom, boom. And now it's locked in. Again, I, I could have bought a new plug, but I just repurposed this. I left the pins up in the factory harness there. But now I have this. I'm going to tape this up to keep it a little bit tighter. And then I'm going to wrap this wire up. Put up above again in case I need one more wire. I can run over to the ECU for a signal or something. At least I have it over here. So I didn't have to run wires across the dash anymore that are already there. So now that that, I ran it up over, I zip tied it, and I ran some tape over it. Um, just because I don't know if it's going to be perfect. I probably want to redo it, but it's plugged in right now. Now I got to come over to the side. I got to take off this cover from Dula Designs. I love this ECU mount. Um, take this off, and I need to pin in one wire to the ECU, and then one needs to go to this little ground setup I did. It goes directly to the battery ground, makes it pretty easy. But I'll take this cover off, and I'll show you where I'm going to pin it at. All right, so I went ahead and stripped the wire here. So if you can see it here. Strip the wire and I've got my solid pin here. Strip just enough, make sure it bottoms out and you should be able to see it through there. There's like a little peephole in that. You can see if you guys can see that on camera here. Like a little peephole in it. Make sure the wire does that. In my case, I'm borrowing my buddy Austin's crimpers here. These things are pretty awesome, but they're also like 700 bucks. So there is that. So you just shove it down this hole here. Automatically bottoms itself out. You just pick which size you have. So you got 20, uh, 16 and 12. 20 actually represents a smaller pin. So you push it down in there. Okay, push it in with the wire, go like this, crimp, and it gives you those nice indentations on it there, and give it a nice tug, doesn't come out. I always, this is 20 gauge, but I always go a smidge smaller. Uh, if you see here on the dial, it tells you what size you picked. You, I could have done 20, but I went just a smidge smaller just to make sure it cramp, clamps on it. Now I just gotta do the other wire real quick. Again, these things are awesome for this reason. Again, boom, I wanna show this all in one clip. All right, and again, done, tug test. Good to go. Now, just gotta put these in the connector down by the ECU here. And again, let's go over and show you guys that. I'm gonna try and use the green for the ground and the purple is going to be the flying lead that goes over to the ECU itself. All right, guys, so here's my connector right there. You can see the purple and green wire. Uh, I'm gonna get my ECU out, my ECU, my computer out now. That's going to the ground. I made this four wire ground, which I just used the last one there. I'm gonna clean this up. I might shorten that wire too. And I'm gonna get one of these things that actually holds the, the ECU plugs in place, kind of like that one up there. Uh, so this isn't banging around. And then I went ahead and ran the green wire over into the D pin here, ran it to an AVI, which is a standard input. Nothing crazy, uh, nothing you know wild there. So did that, and now what I gotta do is put the cover back on button all this up and i'm going to show you guys how to set it up in the ecu now again this is going to be set up showing that it's working but i don't really know how to do this because again i'm not a tuner i'm learning as we go here i rely a lot on nick and other people out there so yeah uh let's go ahead and button this all up so it's all put back together and then i'll get the laptop out all right guys so if you can ignore my computer sounds right here this thing is an old laptop i repurposed but so we've got flat foot shifting set up here and it's very basic once you set this up so it's going to be done while active you're gonna have a max shift time so the way this all works is you're literally just cutting ignition it's kind of like almost like doing rolling anti like in between your shifts um so remember that it's not exactly easy on your engine so it is still putting some combustion is causing some yeah it's pretty much putting rolling anti like into your car between shifts to keep the boost into it so think of it that way it's keeping that going uh so in, oh my god this damn laptop sounds about to take off to Mars. Good, listen to that. 
Holy hell. So anyways, where I was at there, um, we're gonna do it like this. Now, there is a ton of options here, guys, but just to be honest, if you're on a regular man, you do closed loop, they have a time set up. Again, we don't need any of that. We're gonna do Y active because we're basing it off a switch, which is our clutch switch down there. So for this, we can also do conditional also, but in our case, we're gonna just do a flat shift input enabled. And you can see again, I'm gonna do a flat shift switch. Now, in my case, I already had, you can also do it off your clutch switch, right? Which is what I'm using. The difference is though, I don't have, I'm not utilizing my clutch switch because I have this car set up. When I go to turn on, I don't need to have the clutch enabled. You can actually set it up to say, hey, based off the clutch switch, but the problem is, um, then it goes to another table and I kind of like having the switch set up under and the wiring set up under the uh, flat switch here. Sorry, this is a touch screen too, I always forget that. When you go to uh, torque reduction, I'm just doing ignition cuts and then instantaneous recovery so again we're just cutting ignition now there's multiple options once again so if i go here so if i go here you can see all this right if i go out text here you can see again i'm sorry that uh, that light's literally hitting there if we want to uh do the recovery method so how do we bring it back in you can ramp it back in ramp out all that good stuff um the thing is again it's a manual you want to get the power back on or, or you're kind of defeating the whole fucking purpose here so that's just the basics of it. I mean, it's very simple. Um, I'm not saying simple as in like you guys should just know this. I'm saying simple. There isn't a whole lot. I talked to Nick about this because, again, I've never done it. I don't want to blow the engine up. So I wanted to talk to him first just to get a little bit of feedback. Once you get this set up, you could also have it auto downshift. So like if you've ever been in a six speed manual Camaro or Mustang, they have that like you don't have to blip the throttle yourself. It'll do it for you, which you can have that enabled. I personally like doing it myself. I, I like that. I like having a manual. Um, so I don't want the car to do it for me. But once you have the clutch switch set up, you can have it do it for you. Um, for the upshifts here too, minimum TPS. It's set from the box, I think it's set at 75% and then minimum RPM is 4,000. I'd bump mine to 6,000 because you don't want it to initiate too low. Um, and yeah, I just want it to only work once I'm above 6,000 RPM. But when I get back into boost, you want to make sure you're still above that 6,000. In my case, if I shift at that 8,000, 8,300, this should work perfectly. Um, so just be cognitive of that. I could probably bump this down to 5,500 and be okay, but I'd rather have it as high as possible so it doesn't get interrupted by anything when I'm doing normal street driving. That's the last thing you want to happen. So that's pretty much the basis. And we're gonna come over here. If you set it up like this too, you only get so many things. So let's show you this too. So if you do this, let's do instead of ignition cut, let's do this. I'm gonna do go here and let's do fuel cut and ignition retard. You'll see now I get multiple drop downs here instead of just cut percentage, I get ignition retard. If I come back over here and just do ignition retard, ignition cut, there we go. You'll see now all I get is a cut percentage and for that cut percentage, we're gonna do 100%. I gotta restart it here because I changed that. Get a fuel pumps kick. So that's it. So you're just put it 100%. Some people say do 90, but in our case, we're gonna do 100% cut. And then for wiring, I wired it in through an AVI. You can use an SPI, which is a sync pulse input. In my case, I use a standard uh, AVI, which is an analog input. Uh, I try to save all my sync pulse inputs inputs for anything that's important. Uh, so I try to use up all my AVIs, all my basic stuff if I can, uh, before I use anything nice. I think I got one AVI left and something like 10 sync pulse inputs, which is crazy because I got a billion sensors on this car and I still have those, that many inputs left. Um, but you can see here, it's on an off state right now, right? And in my case, I want to do a pull up enable. It will work both ways. It'll just be a much tighter window, which is stupid. So you can do a disable, right? So when I hit the clutch switch here, you'll see, as soon as I hit it, as soon as it comes off that switch, you'll see it goes over that limit. Now it says off still because I have it over. So in my case, I'm like, well, I don't want it pull up disabled. I want it enabled. So it does a full zero to five volt range switch, right? So when I push the button, look, the button, AKA the clutch switch, on, on, on. It's instantaneous. As soon as it comes back up, boom, goes back off again, which is what you want to work. Make sure you have plenty of tension on your clutch pedal. It's not just loose down there, okay? Because you don't want that happening. You see here how like it's just wavering a little bit. That means I got plenty of tension because I can actually have, I can push on a little bit and the clutch switch is still off, okay? You wanna make sure it has to be fully disengaged and then come back up for it to work. So if it's just, if, if you barely touch your clutch and it says like it's enabling, make sure you tighten that all up down there. Make sure it has plenty of tension because when you're driving, you'd be surprised. Um, and again, uh, the reason I have it set to up so high, because realistically I could set this at 0.05 and it'd be on. I want to have a little bit of wiggle room in case, you know, like right now it's technically still off, but right, it's, you know, my foot is just barely resting on, but it's, it's moving that switch. Up, so it's seeing a little bit of voltage change. So I like having this bumped up to one and then anything over three says it's, um, I'm sorry, anything over under one is off. Anything above three is on because it's got to hit five volts. I just like that. Boom, boom, 
boom, just like that for it. So again, come up here to flat shift. We're gonna set, again, TPS must be 75% and above 6,000 RPM. I might bump that down to 55, so, but that's it. That's the basic setup. This is, again, Haltech. There could be way more you guys could do with this. And again, this is just under the transmission stuff. And you have to turn it on, so flat shift to turn it on. But look at all this, uh, torque reduction, transfer case control, trans brake, park lockout, paddle shift inputs. Again, I had to do a generic and do this. I couldn't use it in the same way because I have a, um, oh, shoot, a box down there that tells it which gear it's in. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, never mind. Paddle shift inputs, torque converter, line pressure control, again, all the automatic stuff, which doesn't matter. The six speed car, again, set up your gear ratios, makes it easy. Again, this gives you your speed so it knows what you're doing, which makes it all very nice. Reverse lockout stuff, because I do have an electronic reverse lockout, which controls that with an injector. So yeah, it's pretty neat stuff, man. I'm really happy, um, but I'm gonna shut up now and hopefully get the car out and test it. All right, so get this thing back out again we'll test this I'm a little nervous I'm gonna be running low boost to do this so we'll see how it goes I actually want to much colder out today see how cold start does way too high revved up like 2300 2200 rpm way too high comes out meets target though with that initial flare up I need to fix Besides that, it was like 50 something degrees, so not hateful, but gotta fix it. I don't like that crazy flare up, so I'll have to look at that log then, let it run for another few so I can see everything. There's like about 30 seconds of like cold start window time, I think. Most of the stuff's like 10 to 15, but there's one part that's about 30 seconds, so I wanna capture that, make sure everything's fine there, copacetic. It looks like I'm hitting my target as it needs to add a little bit more fuel over what needs to be there for target, so good. That didn't go as planned as you could tell from the video. So I'm like, what the hell is going on? It looks like I'm misshifting or not going in. It actually is, and I'm acting like it's not because flat shifting wasn't working because of my fault. What did I do? I didn't hold down the gas the whole way. So if you look back at the videos, you can see my foot ever so slightly lift off and you can't do that. You have to stay in it. But my body naturally, like I'm telling myself to do that, but you know, when I'm going in that go fast shift mode, like when I'm doing that, it's just like all natural, like boom, 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 go like that. My leg is just naturally lifting up. I can't, my brain just can't figure out, stay the fuck in it, stay in it. My brain is just like, you have to lift and then shift. And cause I've always done that. And I've always shifted very fast, but my brain's always lifted off the gas and then back into it. And I can do it quick. I'm gonna try it a few more times, but I might take it off because my, I, it's hard for me like watching it back now. I'm like, damn, like I really just, my body naturally do it. So I'm gonna keep trying. Um, if not, I'm gonna turn it off for now. Uh, but I do wanna get it to work because it, it was working. It's enabling properly and I can actually show you guys in the software here. So let's actually do that and I'll show you where you can see my foot come off. You can watch the TPS and you can see it come up. All right guys, so here's one of the runs here. So you can see, oh my God, it's lagging a little bit, but you can see my foot's in it. Um, and let's go over here to flat shift. Actually, we'll use this one. So you can see my foot's in it and the state up here, flat shift, it's ready. So it's mean it's enabled, it's ready to go. And you can see over here, flat shift state. Now, when I go to shift, you can see here, it goes from shifting, which it should be, TPS is still good, but you'll watch here. As I come over, my foot comes up off the gas pedal. See, and it lifts off. And I think that's part of it. Or maybe, I don't know, it's just like, something is just not happy. It's just not happy at all. Um, post shift block out too keeps happening. I don't know if that's part of it too, which is set up in here, right? It's the right thing. It supposedly needs to be on. Sorry for my kids in the background. Uh, let's do this here. Yeah, so you have this block out here, which is the recovery time, right? The amount of time must elapse after the gear change before the next request will be accepted. So I'm like, I don't know, max shift time. The stuff taken is the amount of time the shift will and it will switch to recovery state if there is a recovery method. 
I don't know. It, it's just my foot's coming up off, I believe. I, maybe it's not. It just sure seems like it. Um, but this one here seems a little bit better. Not hateful, but seems a little bit better. You see me coming up, going up, going up. Boom. I'm keeping in it for the most part. And then I don't know if I let out of it because it doesn't feel like it goes into gear or what. But because you see it almost go back up again. I'm in third gear and it's like, man, it's out. So I'm like, I don't know. Something's not happy and I got to figure it out. You can see it in the video. So I'm going to keep you guys posted here. But that's kind of annoying.